here. Speaking of Detroit and goodbyes to Detroit, listen, I just opened this gift pack. Let me tell you, and it smells, it smells good. It smells very pungent, but Primitive Performance uh, is incredible. And we're going to talk about, we've got rehydration, we've got electrolytes, it's fast acting, and all sorts of things going on. Um, and it's solutions that are plant-based. And who is more adamant about that than our Hall of Fame next guest, Calvin Johnson, Megatron. What about that dunk in the All-Star game? Are you going to the NBA? <laughs> we got a Detroit superstar on the show next. I'm opening. I'm opening the topical cream. We a legendary Calvin Johnson. Unbelievable touchdown. Legendary. We a legendary. Wow. Legendary. Oh man, this is one of the best. I can't watch these highlights. Like what? He's your defensive lineman out there. Calvin Johnson, Hall of Famer, one of the best wide receivers in NFL history, three-time All-Pro, six-time Pro Bowler. You look like you could still play if you wanted to go out there today. And named to the Hall of Fame class in Canton for 2021. Megatron, how are you? I'm doing good, good. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. Congratulations on all of the success with Primitive Performance. It's about performance, it's about recovery. I've learned more this morning about the um, phytocannabinoids and it's plant-based and I'm talking CBD, CBN, CBC, CBG. You've got flavors, you've got all sorts of things. We're gonna get into that because I actually think it's very, it's very cool and it's easy to get sucked into learning about how plants yeah. can change your life. You talked about it in your freaking Hall of Fame speech in Canton because it means that much to you. So we're going to get into that and we'll get into a little football. But first, your performance at the NBA Celebrity All-Star Game was so <laughs> amazing. I mean, 21 Savage is out there, Janelle Monet, you've got DK Metcalf. What did this dunk feel like? Uh, it, it was weak, actually. You know, I didn't have any momentum. I wasn't <laughs> able to really get up. <laughs> I really, you know, I got injured at the end of the first half, so I wasn't able to play in and get any more action in the second half. But uh, no, nah, it was fun to be out there with all those uh, celebrities. So I know you were, I, I know that you liked baseball. In high school, you were like a top baseball guy. You could have gone that way and made it happen. Did you ever seriously consider the NBA as an option? I didn't. And it, the NBA was my weakest sport. I mean, the basketball is my weakest sport. <laughs> but I love to play, <laughs> but it was definitely out of the three, it was my weakest sport. <laughs> Okay, you had a guy on the on the uh, on the court with you out there in Utah, named DK Metcalf, who was like a a, a Space Jam monster out there. MVP, <laughs> twenty points, ten boards. Yeah. Do you think DK Metcalf could play in the NBA? The physicality with the, with his physicality, for sure. With his hops, I, I, for sure. There's people that are his ah. size or less in the NBA. I don't know if he has a, has a, if he has a, a jump shot. You know, um, it'd be tough to be down there and the, in, up under the hoop with them seven footers or whatnot. But uh, no, I think he he has the physicality, the uh, athletic ability, really to uh, play multiple sports. Uh, Calvin, he was, and you saw that video, like people thought it was photoshopped of him jumping up to get that ball. Uh, the NFL, I mean, the NFL drug tested him right after. What do you think about that? I would have drug tested him too. You see, like he went up even more after he got to his peak. It was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. Okay, we're going to get into a lot of stuff here. You said recently that your, you know, your relationship with the Detroit Lions and you thank the fans and you love them in your Hall of Fame speech, which was nice. You know, it's trending up. That's what you said recently, which I, which piqued my ears because I sat next to Nate and I know how much those Lions fans loved you. Uh, where do you stand currently between you and that organization, and, and, and are you involved in it at all? Um, just it's good just being able to have uh, conversations with them. Um, really talking to Mike Disner over there and uh, just having some fruitful conversations on a pathway forward. And that's really what it's all about. Just really, you know, just trying to find a find a win win situation for both sides and really find a pathway forward so I can get out there in front of the fans, get out there in front of the team, you know, and just represent Detroit the um, the way I should be. What you live there? I don't know if everybody knows that you 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 stay. I mean, it's an important community to you. Oh, for sure. I mean, I've lived my whole adult life here in Detroit. You know, I have a business here in Detroit. 
you know, so it means a lot. My wife is, is, is from Detroit, not actually Detroit, but from Michigan. So, you know, there's a lot of different things. I have a support system in her family up here. So it, it's great. You know, my mom's from Ohio, so they're not my, I have my grandparents not too far away. So I love Detroit through and through. I've seen it grow from, you know, when I came here um, uh, in, in 08 to where it is now. You know, people should come see Detroit. It's a different place than what a lot of people think about it. But um, like I say, the business keeps me close and, and I have a family here now. Yeah, the Lions made awesome strides last season, too, which is nice to see. Like, they're good. They're great. They're getting better. They finished strong. They beat the Packers and Lambeau with pride on the line, that Lion pride. That's all it was. It was really, And you could tell that on the field. What do you think of the job? Or not even what do you think? How impressed are you with the job that your former teammate, Dan, Cam Dan Campbell, has done in Detroit? And what was he like as a teammate? He's a soldier, you know. Um, I don't know if all the guys know, man. Dan was out there, you know, starting tight end in the NFL, you know, basically with one, with one arm. You know, he was he's like Robocop out there. He had like a cast on his whole arm. It was like my first <laughs> year of playing with him, but he was still starting, he was still productive. That's why he was playing, you know. But just that just goes to show you what kind of man he was. He played through pain, you know, and then to have an accountable team like made like that, you know. Um, and then for that to translate for him to be in a coach. I just hope that the guys that are that his, his his players now, you know, realize the kind of player that he is. And I think that, you know, if you do, I mean, ha having a player's coach is always great. But having a player's coach mm -hmm. that really, you know, not everybody that played in the NFL went to battle, you know, but to see this mm -hmm. guy grind it out through pain and, and, and you know, it's, it's the utmost respect, you know, that um, your peers can really have, have for you when they see, you, you know, grind through that. <laughs> when you don't have to, you can sit out. But he didn't do that. So, um no, you, kudos to him. You calling him ro you, <laughs> you calling him Robo Robocop is very funny. It's a good comparison. I think we should, that that one should stick. Okay, Aaron Rodgers is leaving the Packers. Is this bigger mm -hmm. news for the Jets or for the Lions? <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> I mean it's big it's, it's big news for the Jets. Um you know, the, is it is it is that true? Is it, is it happening? Is, is, is it going I down? don't know. Sure. Let's okay. let's say it is. Sure. I think so. I mean, that's big news for New York. You you know, that's, that's that's big news for New York. But, you know, Aaron Rodgers, he's such a great player. Um, I think he could be great wherever he goes. Um, New York is a tough town, you know, so it's, it's probably like, you know, Super Bowl or bust if he goes there. But um, if anybody can do it, you know, uh, with the way that they uh, finished the season this year or the way we saw him play it at an elite level still, I think, he, you know, he still has the tools yeah. to be able to make that happen. I think, listen, I grew up a Bears fan. I think it's big for the Bears. It's bigger news for the Lions, too. And, you know, the Lions were good in those years against, especially when you were there, against every, pretty much everybody. It was a good team, but you couldn't get past him. There were some mm -hmm. battles when you were in Detroit and Aaron Rodgers. And you said you wanted to play for him. He used to, I heard he used to come up to you and say, come play with me. Yeah, whenever he ran off on the sideline, he and I was over there standing by the sideline. He was like, yeah, come on over here. <laughs> like, you know, the way this contract works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to hear. I love to hear that. Okay, so we thought about the last time that you faced him this morning. We were on our, our morning production call, and I was like, "Well, what was the last game that he played against Aaron Rodgers?" And I'm sorry, we're going to do this, but then we'll make it better with your primitive performance <laughs> to take me to this game. I could not believe the hail mary was your last game in Detroit. Talk about it. Oh, don't do that. Why you do that? Why? Why you, why you do that? <laughs> Oh, this Look was the last this. game I played against him too? Oh, crap. I yeah. didn't realize this Oh, man. <laughs> so this, the frustrating part about this, you know, in practices throughout the season, on, on, on Friday practices or whatever, when we go through Hail Mary, I'm, I'm in the end zone. And I was you going out be. the field. No, no, I was going out on the field and they pulled me off the field on this play. I was, I would have loved to intercept Aaron Rodgers. I would have did it right there. At least they wouldn't have caught that pass on that play. But um, yeah, they pulled me off the field on that play. I don't know why. And then that's why you see me all animatedly after that game, you know, drop yeah. down to the ground just because it was like, wow, like really, we did that. We did it to ourselves. They pulled you off. It's <laughs> famous. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> yeah, Your reaction knows. barely caught on TV. I didn't know um, you. Were, I didn't know. I don't know if any. I, do people know that that you were pulled off the field? Yeah, I was, I was supposed to go out on that play, and they pulled me off the field for whatever reason, and that happened. I did not know that, and that's that's absolutely wild. Um, okay, I want to ask you this one question before we get to primitive uh, performance here. There's a couple mm -hmm. cornerbacks joining you in the Hall of Fame. 
And, you know, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about you finally getting that knock, loving you opening your door, watching it. You make that incredible speech. Now you have that gold jacket hanging somewhere in your closet. Cornerbacks. I mean, there's not a lot of guys on earth that can say that they covered you okay, well, or felt good about it uh, after going up against you. Who was the toughest corner you went up against? You know, just because I went up against him so many times, and I don't understand why we played him like five, six straight years, Patrick Peterson. Hmm. It didn't make no sense. Like, he's not in our division. I mean, they're in the NFC, but they, <laughs> they weren't in the NFC North. I guess people just wanted to see the matchup. But uh, that, that was a tough battle every time. You know, he won some, I won some. And, uh, you know, it, it was fun to play him because I knew it, when you see that, that that game on the schedule, it was like, all right, I need to make sure I'm healthy as can be going into this game because we got to give people a show. I thought but, you were um, going to say Darrell Revis. Well, no, I was about to go to Darrell Revis next. I, I only said Pat because I played Pat so many times. Mm-hmm. I played with Darrell probably like three or four times. And Darrell, I never really had a lot of success against him, especially when he was young, man. Oh, man, he, he was a tough battle. I hated the way he played press. You know, he was good with it. And, you know, I think that there's – I can't, I, I can't imagine many receivers can say that they just had success against the Rams. <laughs> so kudos to him. Um, we look forward to welcoming him into the, um, the hall. You know, much, 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 uh, much deserved. Yeah, and Patrick Peterson still going. He's just signed with the Steelers. Oh, see, see, I haven't even paid attention to who's being signed where, so that, that's going to be interesting to see how that goes um, uh, with the Steelers. I thought, um, you know, he had some productive uh, time there with the Vikings. Um, but, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing uh, how, he, how he finishes out uh, his career. You have the NFL record for most receiving yards in a single season, even though you took on the Darrell Rebuses and the Patrick Petersons of the world, 1,964 yards. Now, Cooper Cup, he came within 17 yards back in 2021 of breaking that record, which I know you were sweating out. But that was in 17 <laughs> games. You did it in 16. Doesn't that piss you off? It pisses me off. Yeah, I just hope that, you know, they just, they just don't forget that, you know, it happened in 16 games. I mean, more, I mean, I hope that whoever does break it, I hope they do it in 16 games, you know, and, and, and not in the 17 so that we don't have to put an asterisk on it. But, you know, the way things are going, it's like it might happen like that. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's I'll really I'll say it. I'll make sure everybody knows. And then if you had to pick a wide receiver, if you had to pick a wide receiver, this smells really good. If you had to pick a wide receiver to break it, who do you think it'll be? Cooper Justin Jefferson. Justin Jamar. Um, I'm trying to think of who these these other young guys that are coming up, but um, I mean, if Cooper and Matthew can get back together and have a year like they did on that Super Bowl run, agree. That, that that's going to be tough to get back to that that level, but you know. Does it, Matthew want to play? I thought he I thought he said he wanted to play. You got to call Matthew. I don't, I don't know, know, but I want to talk about. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Matthew. Matthew won a Super Bowl. He almost fell off stage, and that was that, that you know, or like whatever. He was partying. That's all I remember. That's all I remember. But, and Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald hasn't put his shirt on since. Okay. Primitive performance. This is a collab. This is not just you. So I do want to give love to Rob Sims because I love, you know, it's you and him deciding that you're so passionate about something, you're not just going to talk about it, you're going to take action. So it's founded by you. You do it there locally in Michigan. It honestly smells great. I've been dealing with a back injury that my production staff knows very well about, so I'm putting this where where it hurts. But talk to me about performing, about recovering, where we can get it, and why it's so important to you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if you think about it, I mean, you know, the quicker the quicker you can recover, the quicker you can, the more productive you can be, the more available you can be on the field. So um, with some of these uh, products that we're coming out with, uh, with primitive performance, it's, uh, that's the idea. It's just, just to focus on recovery and just making that, um, making ourselves, the athlete, uh, more available, whether it's just, you know, you're the at-home athlete training or if you're a professional and you need to get back on the field. Um, that's really what, the, what, what, the, what inspired these products. So our first two SKUs are ORS or oral rehydration solution. Uh, I think liquid IV, but we're adding cannabinoids to it. Um, like you mentioned earlier, we, we're, we're working with four different cannabinoids there to affect, you know, the inflammation that uh, everybody deals with um, internally. And then with our transdermal topical, that's I'm really excited about this one um, for the bumps and bruises. We use topicals all the time, going out to uh, pre and post mm-hmm. practice. Uh, I use them now, you know, when I'm whether I'm snowboarding or playing golf, what have you. And um, I actually use it proactively, so I don't have to deal with the swelling afterwards. Now, 
Uh, so I found it to work that way, but it's just exciting to be able to have uh, solutions that are plan based. Um, and it's exciting just to be able to, you know, highlight the healing powers uh, of cannabis. And, and, and obviously, these are uh, products that have CBD, CBG, CBN, and CBC in it. So there's no TAC in these products. Uh, we do have these products um, with TAC versions uh, just for the Michigan market. Um, but yeah, for uh, for e-commerce, we are providing these um, to the masses, so it's exciting uh, to be you able. You could have sent you could have sent that shit to California. You could have sent. Come on now, what? what? <laughs> oh, we, we can definitely do licensing deals and in, in, in legal space with the TAC you versions. Will. But um, you know, with the TAC version, I like it. I, I love it so much because I like to get add a little bit of THC, whether it's ten milligrams or twenty before a workout, really to push past that burn. You know, it kind of wow. um, you know uh, your body kind of like. Uh, uh, make sure you forget about that burn that you're going through and so you get a more effective workout. It's very fast acting. You've been talking for one minute. I know you have to jump, but it's, I can already yeah. feel it. But here's what I'm, here's what I'm going to say to you. My mom watches this show every day and my mom worked in a factory for four, for about 40 years. Okay. And she worked and she made screws and she made, and her hands are always hurting. And now she's a nanny to my niece. And I'm always like, mom, let me send you. And I'm not that knowledgeable. But I'm like CBD, might work, like uh, some sort of relieving cream. CBD might take away some of that pain mm -hmm. so you can feel better and sleep. But she's like, oh, marijuana, that's the, that's where she her head is. So what would you say to my mom about your products? Well, that's the thing that separates, you know, there's no THC in this. THC is, uh, is primarily the psychoactive, psycho, psychoactive component uh, when it comes to cannabis. And what separates our product from, from the rest is that it, 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 involves, it has nanotechnology. And that's just particle size is so small that it can mainly bypass your intestinal intestinal system and get right into the bloodstream and go to work and be bio, more bioavailable for the user. So um, that's what that's what the science is about. What we're doing here um, for primitive performance, you know, we're using that nanotechnology to be able to provide more uh, effective products to the end to the end user. So, like I say, I use them myself. Um, I'm big on rehydration. And I'm, I'm big on, you know, just really just taking care of those bumps and bruises and, and, and whatnot. So just to, at the end of the day, just cr create a more uh, effective uh, quality of life for the user. And if you had it when you were playing, I think it would it was allowed while you were playing and you had stuff like this, I think you would have played longer, Calvin. <laughs> you never know. I mean, I love that the way the NFL is lighting their stance. Um, NCAA, I yes. mean, um, across multiple leagues, the stance is being light, um, lightened there just because more and more education is coming out. So we look forward to you know, being on that forefront and with uh, educating the public as well. And it's coming from you. That's the reason those rules are changing because you're so passionate about it. Hall of Famer, Calvin Johnson, appreciate the time. Sorry we went over a little bit, but we will talk to you down the line, I'm sure. You're amazing. It's literally, uh, this is, this feels amazing. Mom, you could be like Calvin Johnson. <laughs> Come on. Find us on primitiveperformance.com. Uh, press primitive without the yeah. E on it. <laughs>